Knowledge is power. But you'll have to learn how to decipher the information in order to use it effectively. Knowledge well. Informed conclusions are drawn here. And now, your host, Courtney Scott. Good evening, Courtney Scott here with Knowledge Well Media. It is January the 5th of 2017. And as usual, there is no shortage of news. I want to thank you for tuning in today, or actually this evening. Uh, pretty cold outside in the Midwest here. Uh, temperatures in the negative, of course. Uh, I know there's lots of rumors about the good old Midwest and uh, good old Green Bay Packer football and things like that, but uh, it is all it's cracked up to be. But nonetheless, uh, we take it as it comes. And a uh, great day today, productive at work, and uh, looking forward to getting out this report here. Um, I went to the re, uh, I'm sorry, to Ken's site. I haven't noticed that he put up anything new as of late. I was going to, I was prepared to continue on with uh, reports and analysis from his site, but I don't see anything new up here. Um, he does have, as I've stated before many times, archives to go through, uh, but I decided today that I'm going to go on to another report. I will be revisiting and I'll be looking for Ken to be putting out some new material more pertinent to the current uh, political and geopolitical uh, world. But for tonight, we have a special uh, report to do. Uh, actually, I had been praying and of course seeking God on information that would be pertinent and necessary for preparing people. Of course, that's what we do here at Knowledge Well Media is to uh, provide you with data and information so that you can come to conclusions that are informed. And so um, actually, I think this was the day before last that uh, I returned from the bathroom at work and on my desk, there was a several page report called the McAlvany uh, newsletter. I don't know if you've heard about it out there, but uh, it only took me a few moments to skim over some of the article that was left there on my desk. And once I scanned over that, I saw that this was information that definitely needed to be um, put out there in cyberspace, if you will. So uh, again, it's the McAlvany January newsletter. And once I get to reading here, you'll see exactly why I'm choosing to go with this report. So I'll begin to read the title being The Leftist Globalist Empire Strikes Back. The introduction. It is pre premature for Americans, conservatives, and Christians to spend too much time congratulating themselves that we dodged the Hillary bullet or in parentheses it says missile and that all is now going to be great as far ahead as the eye can see or at least for the next four or eight years yes we did avoid a train wreck of epic proportion which would have turned america into an overnight dictatorship and for that we can be eternally grateful but the globalist establishment uh it says wounded by consecutive defeats in Brexit, the Trump victory, the recent Italian vote that caused the resignation of the Renzi regime and may be setting the stage for an Italian exit from the EU. The Philippines election and the approach or the approaching financial meltdown of Europe and more are not backing off from their agenda for a world socialist government. Indeed, in the wake of a string of major recent setbacks, they are actually accelerating their efforts at global control. Bullet number one, communist revolution in the streets. In the six weeks following the November 8 U.S. election, the communists in America have been igniting, inciting street revolution and violence in cities all across America and stirring up revolt among hundreds of thousands of gullible, easily manipulated, totally naive university students. 
their leftist professors and school administrators are putting all their weight behind the student revolt, just as we saw in the run-up to the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia and in Nazi, Nazi Germany in the 1930s. They are openly encouraging the assassination of Donald Trump and massive demonstrations in Washington on Inauguration Day, January the 20th. George Soros and the U- and U.S. globalist establishment are behind most of this agitation, which in, is being aided. Sorry, I got something in my eye. Of course, at the most opportune time, things fly into your eye. Anyhow, which is being aided and abetted by the leftist establishment controlled U.S. media. Bullet point number two, leftist globalist attempts to reverse the election results. Over the past few weeks, the globalists, the Democrats, the entire political left, the uh, establishment-controlled media, Democrat leaders such as Chuck Schumer, and even powerful Republican senators such as John McCain, Lindsey Graham, and Mitch McConnell have launched a campaign claiming that Russian interference i.e. propaganda, hacking of Hillary Clinton's and the DNC's emails, manipulation of news, i.e. fake news, using 200 or more collaborating internet news blogs and news services, all combined to steal the election for Trump and against Hillary. The leftist narrative is that Trump benefited from malicious Russian cyber activity. Sadly, after the media repeats this hundreds of thousands of times, Many people will believe it. It's called the power of media brainwashing. Hitler understood it all too well. As an aside, Trump recently stated that the Democrats stole over 5 million votes on behalf of Hillary. The Washington Post, the New York Times, and most mainline news sources have been breathlessly telling us that the CIA has concluded that the Russians intervened in the presidential election with specific goal with the specific goal of helping Donald Trump win. That the Russians unfairly altered the outcome of the election and therefore Donald Trump's victory is not legitimate and should be overturned. The controlled media keeps repeating the establishment mantra that Russian operatives covertly interfered in the election campaign and manipulated voter sentiment to ensure the Republican candidate's victory. The election was not legitimate, they say. So, going on, before you dismiss all of this as nonsense, consider that on December 8th, President Obama ordered the entire U.S. intelligence community to investigate the Russian interference in the election and the spreading of foreign disinformation and propaganda in the alternate media and on the Internet. He says he will do a full review of the evidence of election theft by the Russians and and report back to the American public before he leaves office. No doubt the CIA can be expected to give him the results that he and the political left want. And paraphrasing what Jimmy Carter said 40 years ago, he would never lie to us. Obama, Hillary Clinton, the Democrat leadership, establishment Republicans, and the entire political left are very serious and until the Electoral College vote on December 19th worked overtime to reverse the outcome of the November 8th election. Most Americans, including most Trump supporters, were completely unaware of these efforts, most of which were behind the scenes, to reverse the election results, or they just don't take them seriously. Having failed in their attempt at vote recounts in four states where the Democrats nevertheless manufactured hundreds of thousands of new post-election votes, the establishment did everything they could think of to convince or bribe at least 37 Republican electors not to vote for Trump on December 19th because, quote, he is an illegitimate president. Time magazine was openly lobbying for electors to vote for someone other than Trump on December 19th. If that had happened, the election would have been thrown into the House of Representatives, where Trump would would never have gotten enough support to win. In mid-December, there was a growing establishment campaign in the media and in the halls of the Congress, led in part by establishment Republican John McCain, Lindsey William, or Lindsey William, Lindsey Graham, and Mitch McConnell to have the election declared null 
and void because of illegal foreign inter interference. This could still happen on January 6th, which is tomorrow, when a joint session of Congress gathers in Washington to count the electoral votes. If an objection is in writing is signed by one member of the House and one member of the Senate, the votes covered by the objection are not counted. And we know that there are rabidly anti-Trump Republican senators and congressmen that would re relish the chance to deny Trump the presidency. Some are already calling for another election. Were that to happen, Obama would remain as president for the foreseeable future. The election outcome would be thrown into the Supreme Court, as happened in 2000, and the country would descend into total turmoil. If all of this fails, the probability is high that the establishment will try to assassinate Trump, as they did JFK when he challenged their financial power base. They will do anything not to lose their power. Anything. And then, of course, we know that um, President Obama actually, I got notes here that I've been uh, jotting down. This is what I do at work was, uh, during my day shift. I'm uh, constantly jotting down notes, front and back, whatever paper I can grab. It's a good thing to do. There's so much information. I, I mean, on my first shift, I'm working like 10 hour days. And so I spend 10 hours uh, of that time with uh, my headphones on and I'm just pumping myself with the geopolitical news that's coming in so that I can have something to report uh, to you. So Obama passed a law Friday, I believe it was December the 18th, the Countering Disinformation and Propaganda Act. <clears throat> Most people were sleeping on this uh, because he did it on a Friday, which is his and, and most of the uh, leftists trying to force uh, legislation through will do it on a Friday when uh, the American people are, are not aware. And this is yet another bill that, or uh, an act that he uh, passed, NDAA 2017. That's NDAA 2017. And this particular uh, law has about $611 billion in it. This new act essentially is uh, said to be the thing that will most likely kill America. And this is basically um, censorship uh, of the, uh, especially of the alt media and uh, dissenters and people that are not going along with this, <clears throat> the leftist agenda and this uh, uh, communistic type agenda. But so that's something to look out for. Uh, NDAA 2017, you can look into that and uh, research it as, as you will. Bullet point three here is censoring the alternate non-establishment news. In late November, the House of U, uh, the House of U, the House of Representatives passed H.R. 6393, Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal year 2017. This bill authorizes the government to crack down on websites suspected of propagating Russian propaganda and disinformation. In early December, the U.S. Senate passed the Countering Disinformation and Propaganda Act, which is designed to put severe restrictions and censorship on alternate, alternate media reporting under the pretense that it is suspected of cooperating with and disseminating Russian propaganda. Do you see where, there, where this is going, he, he asks. Total censorship of information in America and a total neutering of the alternate media. If you are anti-establishment or critical of government policies or actions, you will be silenced. One day, that will include this new newsletter, he says. Of course, President Obama will sign the legislation into law. The political left has launched a massive Stop the Fake News propaganda campaign aimed at censorship, the internet and social media, and purging it of all conservative, non-establishment controlled blogs or sources of information. The globalist establishment and political left enjoyed an almost complete monopoly of all information and news reporting for decades via their ownership of six major news information corporations. 
Then the internet blew a gaping hole in this information news monopoly and the political left's propaganda disinformation juggernaut was badly compromised. In the recent U.S. presidential election, the establishment controlled media in the U.S. and globally was vicious and virtually 100% against Trump. But hundreds, hundreds of conservative and anti-establishment blogs and other independent news sources informed tens of millions of middle Americans of the truth about Hillary Clinton, the pro-communist Democrat Party, and their agenda, and the realities of the establishment control of Obama, Clinton, and their strategy for world government. It is true that there is some dis disinformation on the internet, but much of it is generated by the U.S. government intelligence agencies. But the new establishment campaign launched since their surprise election setback is, is that we must protect the public from fake news. This is totally disingenuous since the establishment controlled news media have been non-stop perpetrators of fake or false news for decades. So the establishment and their Democrat shills in Congress, the leftist media, led by the Washington Post, and allies in Google, Yahoo, Facebook, YouTube, and the major internet providers have launched an all-out war against the conservative alternate media, especially on the internet, by attempting to censor, block, or shut down 200 extremist, quote, blogs. Major moves are now underway via legislation, regulation, many global governments and international agencies, including the UN, to censor and shut down the conservative anti-establishment media worldwide. The establishment in their incredible arrogance totally underestimated the power of the conservative voices on the internet and alternate and social media. It made a huge difference, perhaps the decisive difference in the recent election. So the empire is striking back. They are now moving aggressively to silence that opposition. It's kind of funny because they just released the latest installment of uh, Star Wars and how, you know, the, the story about the good and the bad, the dark side and, the, you know, the, the, in that battle. So it's kind of funny how they put those things out here. And now it's like the Empire is striking back, trying to censor us and, you know, basically trying to take away the American freedom and the freedom of speech. So something to definitely keep an eye on. I do want to also remind you that you should be trying to hedge your wealth and assets in precious metals. It's a safe and time-tested way to protect your wealth and the thing in your investments. Um, and there's a great way to do that, and that's with gold money. And uh, I will provide you with a link. I've mentioned it before. I think for the first time, my previous recording to this one here. And uh, basically, gold money uh, helps you to store hard uh, or precious assets in, in secure vaults. And I believe they use Brinks. In fact, yes, I'm certain it's Brinks. And you can choose uh, to store in particular countries that of your choosing. I think they offer maybe six different countries, including China. They will send you a... Uh, 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 credit card or a debit card where you'll be able to make purchases even now um, and you'll be able to buy things using your gold storage so it's a much more secure way to store your wealth and assets um, as we know the markets and things are unpredictable they're up and down and you uh, nothing is really secure as far as our financial system uh, we know that the economic collapse is eventual it's not whether or not it's going to happen but when and so you just want to hedge your assets and, and safe keepings and things like that so that you can provide for your family and have some type of security in this unstable environment. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below as well as share this in information and get it out there. It does no good for us to just hold it to ourselves. you got to let somebody know. You know, no, no man is an island. And, and if you are alone and, and uh, you know, trying to fight the good fight, it's going to be very difficult. We need each other. We need to come together as community and to uh, stick together and be strong. Remember to find God in your day. And thank you for tuning in to Knowledge Well Media. This is Courtney Scott signing out.